Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Brian Shapiro, a technical writer at ATCC. Thank you for joining us for the latest installments in the ATCC Excellence in Research webinar series entitled Epithelial Mesenchymal Transition Reporter Cell Lines, New Tools for Metastasis Studies, presented by Dr. Wei Gua Xu. Dr. Xu is a senior scientist with extensive experience in genome editing and molecular biology. At ATCC, he was instrumental in the development of cell-based models with disease-relevant mutations. In today's webinar, Dr. Xu describes how CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing technology was used to create epithelial to mesenchymal transition reporter models of colon and lung cancer invasion and metastasis. If you have any questions for our speaker, please use the chat function available through the webinar program. Questions will be answered as time allows at the end of the presentation, and any remaining questions, as well as the recorded webinar presentation, will be archived on the ATCC website at www.atcc.org slash webinars on demand. So with that, I would like to welcome Dr. Xu. Thank you, Dr. Shapiro, for your kind introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking time attending ATCC EMP Report Cell Line Products webinar. In today's presentation, I will introduce you ATCC newly launched epithelial to mesenchyme transition report cell lines. These cell lines are created using CRISPR gene editing technology and have been validated and characterized. They could be valuable tools for studying the molecule mechanisms underlying EMT and for screen compounds targeting EMT. First, let me introduce you about ATCC. Founded in 1925, ATCC is a non-profit organization with headquarters in Manassas, Virginia, and the an R&D and Services Center in Gettysburg, Maryland. ATCC is the world's premier biological materials resource and a science development organization with a collection of over 5,000 cell lines. ATCC collaborates with and supports the scientific community with industry standard biological products and innovative solutions. ATCC has a growing portfolio of products and servers supported by a talented team of more than 450 employees. After the introduction, let's look at today's presentation agenda. I will cover EMT background information briefly. Currently, current EMT report cell lines, how we generate and validate the colon cancer ACG116 vimentin RP report line and the lung cancer A559 vimentin RP report line. Then I will close with summary and questions. Epithelial to mesenchyme transition is a reversible biological process that allows for the trans differentiation of epithelium cells to adopt the phenotype of mesenchyme cells. Traditionally, EMT has been reviewed as a binary process involving a complete conversion from epithelial to mesenchyme state. However, it has been increasingly recognized that cancer epithelium cells undergoing EMT display a array of dynamic intermediate states, a phenotype that has been referred to as partial EMT. Studies using both mass models and cultured human cancer cells indicate that EMT programs allows, allows cancer cells to disseminate from the primary tumor travel to a distant site in the body to develop metastasis. In addition, cancer-associated EMT was also reported to link to chemo resistance. Given the diverse role EMT may play in the pathological processes, EMT is becoming a clinical relevant target for the treatment of the cancer and overcoming drug resistance. A large number of growth factors has been reported to involve in EMT induction. TGF-beta is the most commonly used growth factor for induced EMT in cultured cells. Growth factors active expression 
and function of a core for EMT inducing mass transcription factors such as twist, SNAIL1, SNAIL2, ZIP1, and ZIP2. The forced expression of some of these transcription factors has been reported to be sufficient to induce EMT in epithelium cells. MicroRNA provides another layer control of EMT. Uh, MicroRNA 200 family has been shown to play a role in determining the epithelium phenotype of cancer cells. Epigenetic modifiers have also been involved in EMT. For example, activated histone demethylase PHF2 was showing to promote differentiation of the cells into a more epithelium states. Given the role of uh, given the diverse role EMT may play in promoting metastasis and acquired drug resistance, EMT represents a new target for anti-cancer discovery. Theoretically, there uh, at least three strategies can be employed for screen compounds targeting EMT. The first strategy aims to screen compound specifically targeting cancer cells that display mesenchymal features. The active compounds can use, EM, uh, can use cell apoptosis or death, inhibit cell uh, migration, invasion, and stemness, promote differentiation, or revert chemo resistance. The second strategy designs to identify compounds inhibiting EMT. The compound can preserve epithelium markers such as e catenary expression, inhibit the mesenchymal markers such as vomiting expression, or prevent chemo resistance. The third strategy is designed for screen compounds that promoting MET, and the readout could be induction of epithelium marker expression, downregulation of mesenchymal marker expression, or reverting chemo resistance. I just gave you some information, uh, background information about EMT. Now I'm going to talk about uh, EMT report cell lines showing in the literature. Currently, there's a limited high throughput screen drugs, uh, drug discovery platform designed for EMT. In early studies, EMT associated phenotypic features such as viability or migration were used as a readout for the screen. In one report on pancreatic cancer cell study, epithelium marker e catering expression was used as a screen readout. And in this study, the e catering expression was measured by immunofluorescence signal, but not directly by a reporter. So um, recently, EMT report lines have been used for the high throughput compound screen. And here are a few examples. Report-based screen uh, platform has the advantage that it allows robust quantitative measurements of design endpoint readouts uh, read, read with high reproducibility and low sample variations. Use this EMT report system, high throughput uh, compound screen were performed and led to the identification of active compounds. Some of them act as uh, epigenetic regulators. In this report system, the report gene is driven by engineered short EMT marker gene promoter. So there's a need to develop more physiologically relevant EMT report screen platforms. In recent years, CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology uh, has been developed. It allows the introduction of DNA double stream bricks. Most of DNA double stream bricks are repaired by nine homologous and joining pathway, leading to indels. However, when the donor template is provided, precise target knocking modification can be made in the genome of the cell. Use cutting edge CRISPR gene editing, gene editing technology, ATCC, has created the physiologically relevant knocking EMT report cell lines for multiple cancer types. Now I'm going to talk about the generation and the validation of a colon cancer ACT116 vomiting RP report cell line. ACT116 cell was originally derived from colon cancer patient. It's one of the extensively used cell line for colon cancer research. Previous studies reported that ACT116 cells 
display epithelium phenotype, but these cells can be induced undergoing EMT to adopt the phenotype of Medenkamp cells. At the right side is the Western blood data. Upon EMT induction, epithelial marker E catering expression is dramatically decreased, and the expression of hallmark of mesenchymal cells, Vimitin, is increased. Vimitin is type 3 intermediate filament protein, and it is of increasing interest as an anti-cancer drug target. Clinically, high expression of Vimitin protein is associated with poor prognosis in colon cancer patient. So we have decided to choose Vimitin as a EMT marker for knocking the reporter genes. Here uh, shows the VMT RP knocking design. Uh, in the knocking donor, RP report gene is designed to knock in to the C terminal, the C terminal of VMT gene just before the stop code. After homology direct repair, then, uh, RP expression is driven by VMT indulgent regulatory elements. So allowing for real-time monitoring of VMT gene expression and EMT states in uh, live cells. We have identified Vimitin RP knocking cells, and the knocking allele were verified by uh, genomic and the transcription levels by sequencing. Here shows uh, Vimitin Western blotting data for detection of Vimitin RP fusion protein. Um, we can see that in I induced control samples, um, the antibody does not pick up any signal. However, in the induced um, sample, the three bands were detected. And the smallest band uh, may represent a wild type of protein, that's about 57 keratotin. The highest molecule with a band may be vimitin RP fusion protein, which is about 90 keratotin. And the middle size band could be breakdown piece from uh, vimitin RP fusion protein. To further verify the expression of vimitin RP fusion protein, we did a Vimitin immunocytochemistry staining use induced sample. Left panel is Vimitin immunocytochemistry staining data. Green color represents Vimitin expression. And the middle panel shows a RP a positive red signal. From right merged image, we can see uh, that Vimitin signal and uh, um, RP signal are co-localized in the same cell confirming the knocking Vimitin uh, RP and the fusion protein expression. After confirming the Vimitin RP knocking and the expression of the fusion protein, now let's look at the other features of the, this uh, report cell line. Heterogeneity is one of the common features for many cancer cell lines. As a single cell clone derived from a parental ACT116 cell, we wonder if the Vimitin RP uh, report cell are similar to the parental cell. Here shows the uh, morphology data. Wild type ac 116 cells and Vimitin RP knocking cells were imaged at a low cell density and a high cell density. From these images, we can see that the morphology of Vimitin RP uh, report cells is similar to that of parental uh, wild type ac 116 cells. Next, we look at the uh, growth kinetics. The left side is growth curve data. Wild type ACD116 cells and Vimitin RP cells show the similar growth rate. The right side uh, is about the average population double time. And the up panel uh, show wild type ACT116 cells. And the average population double time is about 20.5 hours. The low panel is Vimitin RP cells. The average population W time is about 23 hours, and the difference is about 12%. The Vimitin RP cells grow slightly slower than wild type ACT116 cell. This data indicate that the growth connected of Vimitin RP cells is similar to that of wild type ACT116 cells. So I just talked about the morphology and the growth connectors. Now let's look at the EMT induction feature of the Vimitin RP cells. microRNA uh, 
200 inhibitors were reported to induce vomiting, uh, to induce wild type ACT1 cells to undergo EMT. So we transfect vomiting RP cells with micro RNA 200 inhibitor. And the, 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 uh, the data showing the uh, bottom image and non transfected control cells um, were shown in the um, top panel. The left side is Debbie stain of nuclear. Uh, the middle panel are face images. We can see that before induction, vomiting RP cells display typical uh, epithelium cell appearance. The cells stay together and are tightly packed. Uh, after induction, the vomiting RP cells show slight morphology change. And the cells show more uh, spreading out and not tightly packed appearance. The right, uh, right panel imaging show uh, before induction, vomiting RP cells express very low level of uh, RFP. Upon induction, RP uh, expression is dramatically increased. Quantification analysis revealed that about 37% cells are RP positive. So this data suggests that upon microRNA 200 inhibitor induction, vomiting RP cells gain some features of many kind like cells, including morphology uh, change and increased expression of many kind marker vomiting. We did high content imaging analysis to quantify vomiting RP intensity changes. The up uh, left panel imaging are from control sample without uh, micro 200 inhibitor treatment. And all five images uh, random picked from induced uh, sample. There's uh, about eightfold increase in RP intensity upon the induction. So I just show the data that micro RNA 200 inhibitor can induce melanin kind marker vomiting expression. Now let's look at uh, upon EMT if the expression of other EMT associated markers or transcription factor uh, have changed. Uh, the image were from uh, vomiting RP cells with and without micro 200 inhibit treatment. The top panel shows the vomiting RP uh, expression that is red and data confirm expressed uh, vomiting RP upon induction. The middle panel uh, image are uh, e catering ICC data. e catering expression is shown in green color. Uh, we can say from this data that micro RNA 200 inhibitor induction dramatically decreased epithelial marker e catering expression. We did DD PCR to quantify the gene expression. There's about six fold increase in vomiting expression and about 95% decrease in e catering expression. In addition, the expression of e, uh, EMT transcript factor ZIP1 and ZIP2 are both, uh, both increased about three to four fold upon the induction. The bottom shows transwell migration assay result. The number of migrated cells in EMT induced sample is about three times more than that in control, nine induced sample. So this data suggests that um, vomiting RP report cells have undergone EMT upon microRNA 200 inhibitor induction. Mm, I just showed the data that microRNA 200 inhibitor can induce vomiting RP expression and EMT. However, this induction generally takes about two to three weeks to make this cell line to be uh, more suitable as a screen platform and easy to use. We want to find other induction protocol that could quickly turn on the vomiting. Vomiting promote hypermethylation has been found in some colon cancer patient, uh, which could uh, lead in the suppression of vomiting gene expression. So demethylating treatment of vomiting RP cells could reactive vomiting expression. Adesactin is a demethylating agent clinically used to treat certain uh, cancer patients. It has also been used in colon cancer clinical trials. 
In addition, some studies report that adacycline can induce MET in some uh, cell lines. So we treat the vomiting RB cells with adacycline to see if it can act vomiting expression or induce EMT. The images um, are from adacycline treated at nine treated samples. As shown earlier, top panel uh, shows red vomiting RP. Adacycline treatment significantly induced RP expression in only about two days. Image quantification shows about a 70-fold increase in RP uh, intensity. The middle panel uh, image are uh, ICC data showing e catering expression that's in green color, not like a micro, uh, micro uh, RNQ hinge inhibitor induction. In that case, uh, significant, significant e catering expression is reduced. We can see from these images that a dissecting induction does not lead to significant reduction in e catering gene expression. Image quantification shows that there's an uh, increase in e catering e expression up, upon the induction. We also look at the morphology data. Uh, the morphology does not show a big change before and after induction. Migration data all, uh, showed that there's not much difference about the number of uh, migrating cells before and after induction. So this data um, suggests that upon demethylation uh, agent uh, adicitin treatment, vomiting RP cells do not adopt the typical features of medicam cells. However, adicitin can be used as um, to be used to induce vomiting RP expression effectively. effectively. Um, I just showed uh, you the generation and the validation of a calling cancer uh, calling cancer EMT report line. Now I'm going to switch to talk about lung cancer A549 vomiting RP report cell line. We have a generated lung cancer A549 vomiting RP, uh, vomiting RP EMT report cell line use a similar approach we used for creating ACD116 vomiting RP report cell line. And TT beta was used for induced EMT in lung cancer A4, A549 cells. So we treated A549 vomiting RP cells with TT beta. Nine induced, in, induced vomiting RP cells were imaged at both low and high cell density. Uh, we can see uh, upon induction, vomiting RP cells display medicam like spindle cell appearance. Then we look at the um, vomiting RP expression, not like ACD116 vomiting RP cells, which show very low background of vomiting RP expression. Uh, A5 and 9 vomiting RP cells display low level of vomiting RP expression. However, TTF beta induction significantly increased vomiting RP expression. Quantification uh, data show there's over two-fold increase in RP intensity upon the induction. We also look at the expression of epithelium hallmarker e catering expression and cells were stained with e catering antibody. And TGF beta treatment dramatically decreased e catering expression. Quantification showed that about 70% decrease in fluorescence intensity. And next, uh, we look at the floral block transwell invasion assay uh, data. Vomiting RP cells treated with uh, TGF beta and control cells treated with PBS. Induction uh, was for five days, then cells were subject to transwell invasion assay. After 36 hours incubation, cells were stained with nuke blue and images were taken for uh, analysis. Invaded cells uh, are visual, visualized by nuc blue uh, stain. And in addition, since the report cells are RP positive, so the invaded cell can also show RP, uh, RP red. From this image, we can see that TGF beta treatment samples 
have more individual cells than uh, in the control. Here is cell number quantification data. Yellow uh, color column represents the nuclear blue positive cells, and the blue columns are RP positive cells. And the data show that the number of invaded cells in TGF beta treated sample is about three times more than that in control cells. Taken together, this data indicates that TGF beta uh, can induce A549 vomiting RP cells to undergo EMT. One of the uh, important applications of EMT report cell line is used as a platform to uh, screen compound targeting EMT. As I mentioned earlier, one of the screen strategies is to identify compound to prevent EMT. Since TGF beta can induce A4 9 VMT RB cells to undergo EMT, so we treat the, uh, we, we tested if TGF beta uh, specific inhibitor A83-01 can block or prevent EMT induced by uh, TGF beta. To do this experiment, a459 limiting RP cells were cultured in the media with or without TGF beta. Meanwhile, the cultured media was also supplied with a A83-01 inhibitor at a series of different concentrations. After five days incubation, cells were subject to high content imaging analysis to quantify RP intensity changes. The data here indicated that um, RP intensity of TGF beta treated cells shows a decrease in response to A83-01 inhibitor treatment in a dose dependent manner. However, the RP intensity of nine TGF beta treated uh, control cells does not show much response to the inhibitor treatment. So this data indicated that EMT induced by TGF beta might be blocked by TGF per specific inhibitor, A83-01. So now I'm going to move the summary section. The data I presented today uh, indicated that we have successfully generated the limiting RP fusion EMT reporter cell lines via CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology. Vimiting RP reporter cells, unequal EMT upon induction, enabling real-time monitoring of EMT intermediate states in live cells. Vimiting RP uh, EMT report cell lines are suitable in the sensitive models for studying the molecule mechanisms underlying EMT and for development of new anti-cancer drugs that are targeting EMT. And thank you. Um, very much for uh, taking time attending today's webinar. Now I will turn the microphone back to Dr. Shapiro. Well, thank you, Dr. Xu, for that excellent presentation. In just a few moments, we will begin our Q&A session. Please use the chat function available through the webinar program to submit your questions. This session will be documented along with the recorded webinar presentation on the ATCC website at www.atcc.org slash webinars on demand. So for our first question, are the cell culture media for EMT reporter cells the same as the parental cells? Uh, the answer is yes, they're the same. The media for uh, parental cell lines can also be used for culturing the report cells. Okay, and um, here's another question that's just come in. Do you have any other EMT cell lines uh, that are available or in development? I guess that's in addition to what was described in the presentation. Uh, we are developing EMT reporter lines for uh, other cancer types. They will be showing on ATCC website when they are available. Okay. Um, now, have you tried an experiment to see if TGF-beta can induce uh, epithelial mesenchymal transition in the HCT-116 vimentin RFP cells? Uh, that's a 
excellent question. We did try it, and we used 10 nanograms, one micro, uh, one mil TGF beta to induce ACT116 limiting RP report cells, but uh, we did not see induced limiting RP expression in about two to three weeks. Now, you showed Western blotting data that showed detection of VIMRP fusion protein in the HCT116 VIM cells, and the antibodies picked up three bands. Have you also detected the Vimentin wild type allele and RFP um, knock-in allele transcript at the mRNA level? Um, we performed RT-PCR on induced ACT116 vomiting RP cells and confirmed the vomiting wild type allele and the vomiting RP fusion transcript. Okay, um, what's the TGF beta concentration that was used for the A549 VIM RFP cell induction? Uh, I think it's uh, 2.5 nanogram nanogram per mil. All right. You showed data that small molecules such as A83-01 and PP1 blocked the EMT in A549 VIMRFP. Have you tested if there were any changes in terms of the cell's invasion capacities for those small molecules? Uh, that's a good question. Um, um, we have not done this experiment. That's a good question. Okay. And um, here's, here's another question that actually a couple um, folks asked this. Did you do the experiment to test if the EMT reporter cells can develop a tumor in a mouse model? Um, we have not done this experiment. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. It's a good experiment. Okay, here, here's a question that's very specific about the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing process. Have you tested that there are any off-target DNA cleavage during the gene editing? Um, based on the, the gardener design, um, the information, we sequenced 10 potential of target sites. And the sequencing data show that uh, nine of them showing of target DNA cleavage. Okay. Now, um, if someone was interested in recapitulating these experiments, where could they find the um, the MIR-200 inhibitor induction protocol for the HCT-116 VIMRFP. And we provide this induction protocol online associated with this uh, product. You can find them uh, from ATCC website. Okay, so you can find it on the product page? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, now, regarding the Growth Connects data, what's the general range um, to say that it's similar? Um, we generally say it's about, uh, we see the similar, it fell in the range about 25%, uh, could be 20, 25%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and, and then for, for this last question that's come in, what's the knock-in efficiency for generating the reporter cell lines? Uh, ACT116 cell line, uh, it's easy uh, to do cell line for gene editing. And the target e efficiency of the, this experience is about 10%. It's about 10%. Okay. All right, well, thanks. Um, at this time, we will conclude our Q&A session. I'd like to thank Dr. Xu for the excellent presentation, and thank you, everyone, for attending the webinar. Uh, any questions that were not answered this afternoon will be answered and posted with the video at www.atcc.org slash webinars on demand. And we have a couple of other resources um, that you can look at if you're interested in uh, our epithelial mesenchymal transition products. 
So uh, the ATCC website, www.atcc.org slash EMT has more information as well as link to, links to the products. Uh, we also have a flyer that shows some of the data that was shown in the webinar um, uh, about the epithelial mesenchymal transition reporter cell line um, at the, the A549 cell line. Um, also, you can contact Dr. Shu um, directly at wshu at atcc.org. So um, again, thank you, Dr. Shu, and thank you everyone for uh, attending the webinar. Have a great day.